7 o'clock in Honolulu, 4 o'clock in New York on Tuesday, the 4th day of March 2014. And this is a, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. Market giveth and the market taketh away. Taketh away is the key underlying element today as we see both gold and silver trading moderately to strongly lower on the day. We are well off of the lows. We're looking at a two-day chart here, and you can see the kind of range we've had over the last two days. It's tremendous. In terms of the range today, low 31.10, high 52.60. Current print, as you see on the screen, 35.10. Puts it off roughly $15 on the day. On the left, continuous contract of COMEX futures. Silver. Also off of the low, but down sharply today, off about 26 cents, 21.48, or excuse me, 21.14. Current print on the screen, the low 20.93, high 21.60. We'll talk about silver, our current stop towards the end of the show. Traders, I want to start today's show by looking at a 240-minute chart, standard candlestick format. I want to talk about our current trade, our exit strategy, as well as our stop. Now, we did raise our stop yesterday, and I want to explain why we put it where we put it and what we're looking to accomplish. Of course, this most recent spike has really been fueled uh, as a rush to a safe haven asset as there was uncertainty. And I'm speaking, of course, about the uh, Ukrainian scenario going on. That has kind of de-escalated, so to speak. And so the premium that went into gold based upon uncertainty started to come out based on less uncertainty. Let's put it to you that way. But when we look at it on a technical basis, my sense is that we just captured a, a tremendous trade on the way up and we got out roughly at 25, 26. We got in at around 12, 62. We then took a stab at the market when it broke out and we can see the market right in here. We entered the trade roughly in the same area where it was. In other words, we got this breakout right in this area. I've gone ahead and blown the chart up, but the key was, of course, this being 1332, let's see if I can get it somewhat straight here. We, we really broke this breakout. We bought this breakout, excuse me, on Sunday in the mainland, of course, Monday in Australia when it opened under the belief that as Hong Kong went in, we would get this tremendous spike. We, in fact, got that, but we did run into some real resistance, and we've got some hardcore Fibonacci numbers in this area that showed us that this was a potential top. And really 65 is, is one of the areas that we're looking at. That was a top that the market hit previous, and that was after coming off of the 1435 rally last year, June of last year, so to speak. So when we look at this market, we get these sharp spikes, uh, dramatic corrections, but they are shallow. And when I say shallow, what I am referring to is the amount of the retracement itself. In other words, even if it spikes down hard, but if it only spikes down uh, to either a 38% retracement level or a 23% retracement level, in either case, it's doing it rather sharp. And then it's being followed by another sharp move up and a spike. And we again, we got the sharp move up and we got the spike. Now, because this market is running on really rumor-based knowledge, in other words, that uncertainty, my sense was that I certainly want to protect at least our equity on this trade. So I had made a recommendation. We have officially moved our stop to uh, 1327. We're in at 1333, just a couple dollars below where the market is. We do see a little bit of a base forming, but the key is, is that if the market is going to a road. And when I say a road, meaning that premium that went into the market because of uncertainty begins to come out. This is 1330. And the reason for 27 was to put it really um, below, below some of these, the bodies of these real candles right here. I'm not necessarily looking at the tails. You have support in this area, good solid support. You get this kind of clustering. It does have a little bit lower, but you have this clustering right here. So we're seeing an area where at least technically based, there should be good support. And then as you can see, the market hit that low and it did find support in this area. 
And so, as you're well aware of here, it's a ceiling. Here, it's a floor that it breaks through down here. But again, here, once again, here it's a floor. So we wanted really to see how it reacted, but we most definitely did not want to put ourselves in a scenario where if the market does come down, that we're taking any kind of real heat on this particular trade. And so we're going to maintain our stops, 1327. Uh, silver stop was also moved to, I believe, uh, 20.90, low was 9.3, so we're okay there. But it's going to be a tight trade. As you can see, what I tend to do is initially I'll put in a, a looser stop when we initiate the trade. If the trade's running in our favor, it's a lot easier of a decision. But if we're taking any kind of heat, we want to be able to quickly ascertain uh, really the risk reward ratio of this given trade and to take that risk factor and really run that down as much as possible because the key the key, of course, is to define our risk reward. So on the trades that were wrong, we're taking a much smaller hit in the market than when we're right, we try to run it up. And so that's exactly what I'm trying to do in this strategy. We'll, of course, see how that works out as this trade unfolds. We are looking at a daily chart, standard candlestick format. And of course, on this chart, really what we're looking at is a couple things. First of all, is our long-standing resistance line that we absolutely tore through. Then as this market really plots up, we initially looked at our top at about 1329, that's this point here. Market did in fact come down. Now it busts through there, but as you can see, it appears as though that 29 should become support. Our stops at 27, and I'm hoping 29 becomes support. But what's interesting is the size of that red candle. It is pretty large. And it is a lot of, in my opinion, premium coming out of the market. You have the equities markets just running rampant again to the upside. And I believe that that's also going to put some pressure to the downside in the precious metals markets. But on a daily chart, we've got this long, long candle. Now, of course, things look dynamically different when we convert our standard candlestick into a Japanese average chart. That long red day has now become green because it compares it to the midpoint. It has a absence of the lower wick and that's really what we look for on the way up or I should say green candles. As you can see the green candles, look at this, all the way up there's the absence of tails where we do get that retracement. We get these doji-esque, these doji candles right in here, open and close being the same. And then you get a building of the body size and even today with a down day, you can see in terms of the direction of the market, it's still dynamically higher. And typically what you're going to get at the top of these markets is not a candle that's this size. Because if we look at some of the tops, for example, right in here, top, we can look at some of the examples here. This is towards the bottom end of the range. And here you get body sizes that are, are pretty sizable right into red. But on a typical top in the market, what you genuinely get is this, the dojis right down there, as, as you can see right in here, and that color change. We're not seeing that yet. And so I don't think we've got a real primary top in place. Now, that is, of course, until we compress this chart, because when we compress this chart, we look at this top right here, and this is, this is where I'm pegging real resistance right now. It's based on this particular top here, and recall, we had two basic tops last year, 1435 here and 1365 here. So as this marketplace has come up and made its play, it's found some resistance really here, and We'll see how it plays out, but and this is what I said last week, even though we're long, and the reason we went long is the scenario in terms of the global uncertainty that led me to believe that we could see a spike up, but on a technical basis, we talked about the fact that what we'll probably see is market come in, kind of test this top right here, maybe falter the first time, that would be our corrective wave right in here. That's gonna take it down to a certain level and then a surge which would take us up past this point right here. And then the question is, does it have the kind of room or momentum to take it back to the 1400s? Because that's where I feel that this market could go over time over this next year. So when we look at the big picture and I've 
pulled uh, up one of my Elliott Wave charts, our basic count, uh, ABC, our transitional, wave one, bear count wave two, wave three, bear count four, truncated fifth, this is our A, somewhat of a B, and then our final C. That is the scenario that I believe could still be unfolding. The real question is, is where could this A go? And realize that A is not as tough to call as wave one, but they're both benchmark waves. In other words, wave one is really the, once that's firmly in place, we use that to model what we think we'll see for our three and five. Wave five is gonna be roughly the same size as wave one, wave three. It's never the smallest, so it can be anywhere between one times up to 1.61 times the amount of wave one. In the same way, uh, wave A is a transitional wave. B, we're gonna look at as 50 to 75% of A, but we have not determined where A is really gonna end yet, and that is really what we are trying to ascertain at this point to kind of plug different pieces into the couple of models that we are currently looking at and using for our strategy. Traders, we are currently looking at a silver chart. This is our daily silver chart, standard candlestick format. We can see the kind of resistance that really came into the market as it tried to stab at these $22 mark. Uh, my upside target in silver is still around 23. Market comes down, real support in the market. Our stop is currently under this point right here, 2090, and that's why I put it under there, 38% retracement. Market sitting at 21.15, so it's close, but we still have a little bit of, call it wiggle room in the market. But interesting combination of candlesticks that we're seeing on the daily now. What I make of it right now is you are starting to get that variation of a three river evening star. So you get long green candle, you get star, and then you get red candle. However, the body size of this red candle is absolutely much too short to really look at it as a three river. But if we look at the candlestick type that you got on this daily chart yesterday, that is very much a shooting star. And what you look for in a shooting star is a small body candle. That's this body, the body's right here. You also look for a tail, and that tail has got to be, in terms of the definition, at least two to three times the body size of the actual open and closing range, the, the, the star itself. And then that really determines a shooting star. Shooting star is a fairly rare occurrence because when you think about it, markets been moving higher, you and body color is not important. This could be red or green. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the body size in comparison to the tail. And what's happening in this is you get the market, it opens in this case, right down here, it comes in and it makes a dramatic new high. In other words, it makes a high that's in new territory. However, when it hits these highs, you get sellers come in the market, they bring the market back down to almost unchanged. That's how you get the small body size is that in comparison to where it opened, of course, you're getting a open and closing range that's dynamically small and that's that body size here. So it is a pretty valid shooting star now that if you look at it here we are getting that confirming candle but as I said it's a very very small body candle our stops are in play our strategy is defined we'll have to see how the market unfolds and where this market wants to take us this has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review bye-bye